Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Hard 100, a video series documenting the culling of my collection from what it is to what it is going to be, and that is a Hard 100 game. Today, we are talking about another Kickstarter game. Now, living here in Texas, people know what to expect, or they have sort of a stereotype when it comes to what people are like that are from Texas or from anyone. So, for example, I'm from Texas. My name's Billy Bob. Hey, I ride horses. Cool. Hey, you're from California. Hey, you're a surfer guy. Hey, you're from Florida. You're probably addicted to meth. But sometimes you come across someone who's from a state and you're like, I don't know what you're associated with. So I think it can best be summed up in the sweet immortal words of John Denver. And I quote, <clears throat> country roads take me home to the place I belong. Oh, Montana, mountain mama, take me home, country roads. Welcome to Montana Heritage Edition by Aru Whittaker Dorn. That's the state that looks like a face. Is a game in which you and a handful of players are getting resources to build settlements, to get cows, to do other things, and it's a dang good time. What we have here is a very simple family weight plus racing worker placement game kind of thing. So what you're doing is on your turn, you have one of three things that you can do. Very, very easy. You can either one, recruit, in which you take the beautiful, beautiful spinner and you beep, spin it. And then you take the workers, the blacks, the browns, the reds and the yellows, and you put them in your front in your little player board. The player board, by the way, wonderful, love it. The other thing you can do is send these workers to work. You take the worker and you place it on the space and every space has little two spots. So the coal worker can only go on coal, the wheat worker can only go on wheat, and the pumpkin worker can only go on pumpkin. I guess he's supposed to be orange. And of course no one works for free, so anytime you place a worker somewhere you have to spend bink, that money to get it done. But you can also send an additional worker to get an additional resource. So for example, I can send one coal miner in to get some coal for a sweet, sweet coin. Boop or I can send two to get a coal plus another coal. And there is a two for one exchange rate where two workers of any color can equal anything. So there are the four resources and I can send a combination of workers and increasing amounts of money to bring back all those resources. Or I can send a group of workers to the bank. Now, why is it when I send three workers to a bank, they come back with $12, but if I only send one worker to the bank, they come back with six. I think they're robbing that bank. Or you can send them to the storehouse or auction house in a very convoluted auctioning system in which I get a pumpkin, and then I'm wagering these pumpkins with the other players to get upgrades for some of the resources. The coal and the rocks are actually miniature versions, and then when you take them there, it's the only way to upgrade them to the bigger versions in order to build on places on the settlement board. Or you can build, you can build up to three settlements on the game board. Now the game board is consisted of a whole bunch of tiles that interlock together, and on these tiles, there are going to be the resources that are required to build a little place on. There are, could also be a cow, and a cow is basically a wild card. Oh, it can be any worker, it can be a couple of bucks, uh, or it can be any resource. And what we like to do is we just put the little cow on the space and we send the cow to work. I don't know, it made sense. It was fun. And it's always funny to imagine a cow going to rob a bank. Hmm, it's funny. And that's it. So you're going to spend the resources to put the settlement on the space and you can build up to three of them. If you ever get four in a row, connect four style, you actually get to build another one. And the first person to get rid of all their settlements first is the winner. And then it plays at the end of the round, and then if everyone's able to get rid of them, there are ties broken with cows and canteens and all sorts of stuff. If you build next to a lake, you get a canteen, which gives you an extra action, which is nice, because on your turn, you're only going to be doing one of them. So, you're spinning the spinner to get some workers, you're sending the workers and paying them to get some resources, or you're spinning those resources to build some things. Alright, so let's break down the three things that you're doing. Spinning the spinner. Super fun. A little spin of the spinner, you get the workers, there's a space for pick any two, and you can always spend the wheat resource to mitigate and kind of turn it. Nothing wrong with that. Phenomenal. Sending them to work is okay. When you send someone to work, obviously you have to pay them, and you can't wipe that section until all of these spots are filled. So there are three spots for all the resource gathering sections, four spots for the bank, and then the dumb spot for the storehouse auction thing. Now that storehouse auction thing, I can explain this game in maybe two minutes. It's super awesome, super quick, super easy. 
but that goddamn storehouse is an additional three to four minutes to explain on its own, complete with me having to do an actual example. Everything is so intuitive. Hey, get workers. Why? So I can send them out to get stuff. Why? So you can build the things. Cool. What's this other spot down here for? Oh, you need it to upgrade to get other things. Okay. So now you can handle this one of two ways. Since you're betting pumpkins, you can say, oh, they don't have any pumpkins, so I'm gonna go ham on this and just upgrade all my stuff. Or you can do what we mainly did and ignore the shit out of it and just play the game the other way. I feel like that other space could have been literally anything and it's so difficult to explain and so unintuitive of like, okay, I placed my guy here. Okay, now everyone goes. On my turn, normally I get an action and boom. But here, like I go here, all right, do you want to outbid? No, I want to go up here, okay. You, no, okay, me, back you. No, I go in front of you. Okay, no, you don't have any pumpkins. Okay, cool. It just stops the flow. In the games that we played, it was, I go, you go, I go, you go, I go, you go, you go, I, it's very fast. And then you go, you go, I go, you go, oh, auction house, stop. I don't know. And then building the actual settlements is fun because you kind of hoard all your things in order to have a really good turn to build as many because you only have to build next to an existing settlement. You don't have to build next to one of your settlements. So you can always block someone when they're going for the four in a row or to get the cow or to get the very powerful canteen. And some of these spaces will allow you to double stack. And if you get a four in a row on a double stack, you actually get to put three. So it's awesome. So it's a really quick way to get rid of them. This game escalates fairly quickly. It's kind of a um, gradual and then it spikes at the end. But the neat thing about the resources is that they are a finite resource. So if I would ever go, oh, I need some wheat and there's no wheat to get. Everyone has to give a wheat until I get all of mine. So it's kind of a, oh, you can hoard it, but I'm going to get my wheat. I'm going to get my pumpkins. And that's the game. Ladies and gentlemen, all you're doing is you are getting workers. You're sending those workers to work things, and then you are building the things. Easy as that. Let's do some housekeeping. Mm -hmm. Two to four players. Now this is an odd thing. I've played it with two and I've played it with three. When I played it with two, I thought to myself, I really wish there were more players so I could have more time to think between my turns. And then I played it with three and it was so chaotic that everything I thought about doing in between my turns was undone by the time I got there. So I couldn't really think. This is a really weird game where two players is not enough and three players is too many. 45 minutes, we'll talk about that in a second. And then ages 10 and up, how to play the game is right there on the back. All the components and everything are beautiful. It's very, very nice. Let's, ugh. Montana, Heritage Edition. All the components are nice. Uh, the bits are all wooden. I have a little bank space for the money that I'm getting. It takes up a lot of table space. There's, ooh, it's everywhere. Here's my problem with the game. 45 minutes, the game takes maybe 30 minutes to play. And it's like 20 minutes to set up. I have to set up every tile. I have to load up the tiles with cows and canteens. Because the resources are finite, I have to count out a certain number of them depending on the player count. And it's a lot to get into. When I sit down to think, hey, do I wanna play Montana? Yeah, I do wanna play Montana. Do I wanna set up Montana? No, do not wanna set up Montana. I just wanna play it. It's not already played? All right, call me in 30 minutes when you get it all set up. The art, some people might not like, it's kind of old whatever, but I actually really like it. I think the player board's really nice. There's a spot for everything. I love playing the game. I love playing 90% of the game. I do not like setting it up. If you think setting it up is a, is a pain in the ass, striking it down is also a pain in the ass. Like you think a game like Dinosaur Island, like the beginning and the, and the end, is a lot to unpack and repack, but that's okay because I just got finished playing like a 90 minute game. So it was a long thing. So I got my time's worth. New rule, ladies and gentlemen, just thought of it. If the time to set up and pack away your game is longer than it takes to play the actual game itself, get the fuck out of here. So Montana, Heritage Edition, fine game. The first time I played it, I was like, this is great. The second time I played it, I thought to myself, this is good. And I don't really wanna play it anymore because I don't wanna set it up. I don't wanna take it out of this box and put it back in the box because striking down and setting up it takes longer to do that than play the game. And as we've just previously established, if your game takes longer to set up and put back down in the box than it does to play, again, get the fuck out of here. Montana, Heritage Edition, fine game. But you, I'm so sorry, are out.
of the hard 100. This is a game about getting workers, sending those workers to get bits and using them bits to build things. It kind of reminded me of Tumult Royale, including Spinner and everything, where I'm just getting resources to build on spots. And the gameplay, really good. Except for that auction space, which, ooh, if I never have to explain what that space does again in my life, I will be very happy. And if I never have to set this game up or take it back down, I will also be equally very happy. So Montana, I'm so sorry to see that you are out of the hard 100, but I am looking forward to seeing what this designer does and seeing what else he did because Montana never want to play it again. So you are off my shelf and into the bin of selling stuff along with your condom. So I guess he was right. Take me home down country roads. Take me home down country roads. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this, the latest edition of The Hard 100. I hope you and yours are well. That game might be right for you if you're looking for a Family Plus style game, but be prepared that some of the youngins might not understand what the auction space is, and that's where the plus comes in. And there was a bit of confusion with, oh, I can put a worker here, but is that other space gone too? Yeah, it is. So a little bit of confusion, and it takes forever to set up and pull down. So if you are the kind of guy who has the game set up, when people come over, Make sure that's set up before they come over because otherwise thumbs be twiddling, phones be out, and that's not what you want. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on this, the latest edition of The Hard 100. Go find your own country road, ladies and gentlemen, because Montana is just a face. Peace out.